Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the liquid tool that comes with the SkinGen Premium plugin. We'll explore how you can use this cool tool and take a closer look at how to create liquid drops and drips. The first thing we need to do is drag the liquid tool onto our character from the specific subfolder of the SkinGen tools folder. You'll see that a default sweat appears on our character's head. There are a few different sections of the liquid tool that we can explore here. Let's first open up both the drop and drip sections. If we deactivate them separately, you can see the effect that it has on our character's head. Their names basically describe the difference of their appearance. In the material section, you can see that we have the option between choosing single or duo colors for our drops. You can determine the amount of expansion of each color with the sliders below. Normal strength will make the effect a bit more prominent, but notice that in this case it will also reduce the amount of specular highlights as well. Roughness and metallic will also have the predicted effect. You can make your liquid glow if you wanted to have the effect of some kind of toxic sludge as well. In the micro normal section, if we zoom in you can see that a stronger strength value will make the skin texture a lot more apparent on the surface of the drops. Blur and expansion sort of work together, where you have a higher blur and expansion value to blend your micro-normal effects more or less into the surrounding skin. In the mask section, I have a project here where the liquid effect is basically over the entire head of our character. If we activate the mask, you can see how this can very subtly affect the skin if we have a cloudy texture map in this channel. From there, you can tweak the various other parameters in the transform section to adjust all of your standard things like offset and rotation. The pattern section allows for even more customization of the mask by allowing blur, expansion, and contrast to tweak and create all sorts of unique different looks, depending on the effect that you're going for. In this next example, we're going to take a look at the drop section first. In this section, the distortion slider is only for the default texture. If we load in a custom texture map here, you'll notice that the distortion slider will now become disabled. The transform section contains all of the other sliders such as amount, scale, and tile that you can use to increase or decrease the amount and size of the sweat droplets. You may also be familiar with the next few sliders. They're the basic transform values that you can use to position and randomize the effect on your character's skin. These are pretty basic, and you can mess around with them on your own time to get your own unique effect. As always, there's also the blur slider that allows you to blend the effect more into the base skin layer. Let's take a look at drip next, which is a bit different from the drop section. Here we have an option to use a 2x2 atlas which will alter the pattern by randomly extracting one of the four elements in the texture to tile onto the skin. Let's load a custom texture map in first. This wonky shape is pretty easy to recognize on the skin once we apply it. You'll see that both the size and position will be randomized. If we change this to the 2x2 atlas mode, it will take certain parts of that texture map and then randomly position and blend them into your character's surface skin layer. This illustration might help to demonstrate how the 2x2 atlas mode splits up the texture map and places each of these sections separately at random areas on the skin. Let's take it back to default mode and set it back to our normal drip texture map. Here we still have all your basic transform values, but with drip in particular, you can reduce the amount on the Y slider to elongate the drips down the skin. All of the other sliders are again pretty basic, mostly just adjusting the position and rotation of the drops on your character's skin. There's an interesting slider called Distortion, however, which is fairly unique in the way that it affects the drip itself. You can create a much more squiggly drop of sweat by adjusting the two distortion sliders. Let's reset the tool now and increase the amount of drops a lot in order to better demonstrate the general settings. In this section, if the projection method is set to triplanar, then projection blend will be enabled. Projection blend essentially smooths out the seams of the projection. Since the pattern texture is blended into the skin via box projection, there will be seams between the front and sides, which projection blend helps to smooth out. In this last example, we're going to take a look at adding some various blood effects onto our character's face. Let's again add the liquid tool to our character 
and adjust the color to make it appear more like blood. We can blend in the opacity a bit more to darken the blood and make it more apparent. Tweaking the normal value will also cause it to pop a little bit more. Let's customize the texture map a bit by replacing it in the drop section with this splatter pattern. We can adjust the pattern scale, distortion, and variation to randomize the effects a bit and maybe increase the amount of blood slightly. To add even more gore to the effect, we can throw on some drips as well. For this one, we're going to set the pattern type to 2x2 Atlas and replace the texture map with a dripping one. From there, it's just a matter of tweaking all the position and randomization sliders to get the effect that you want. Once we're finished getting the effect that we want from all of that, you'll also notice that there's blood on our character's ear as well. If we want to only apply the drip effect to a certain area of the face and avoid the ear, then we can load in a custom layer mask. In this case, the one we're applying covers most of the face, but not the rest of the head, so you'll see the blood drip effect removed from the ear once we apply it. And that's really about all there is to it. You can see now that we have a pretty gnarly looking dude that looks like he just went through the grinder. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to stay updated on our YouTube channel for more tutorials like this, and check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com. I hope to see you in the next video.